Speaker. I call Andrew Bailey. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. It's a pleasure to be talking on this Taxation Land Information and Offshore Persons Information Bill. I think this is a very good piece of legislation. In fact, I think it's a very smart piece of legislation. And I am pleased to see that many of the opposition parties are actually supporting it. Now, the reasons why I believe it is a good piece of legislation are fivefold. The first one is that, yes, that's right. The first reason is that it, it reinforces the tax obligations that everyone has, but for some reason many people seem to forget. The uh, issue is that if you're in the business of buying and selling houses, and there's an intention test, and you have a view that you want to buy and sell for the intention of making money, then that is a taxable activity and always has been in New Zealand. Right. It's the same whether you buy and sell shares. And what this bill does is it says that for all tra transactions sold within two years are basically captured by the, this bill unless the seller is selling their main home. And uh, we can talk about the definition around that, which we've expanded and been clear about. Secondly, it's been inherited as part of a deceased estate. Or thirdly, it's been transferred as part of a uh, metropolitan uh, property settlement. And so being absolutely clear about this is a very important component in terms of making sure that our tax system in New Zealand is robust, transparent and operates very effectively. The second reason why it's a good bill is that it adds to our knowledge about the level and extent of transactions taking place in New Zealand with regard to non-New Zealand residents. And I know that the opposition have been very strong on this matter, although they seem to be wanting to apply it to everyone. So where this bill has been quite sharp and smart is that we have just focused it on the right area, which is those uh, people who are buying our properties from offshore or basically non-residents. And what we've said in this bill is the ability for information on those transactions to be shared between the ARD and the Land Information Office. There is two steps to it. One is a generic uh, sharing and public publicisation or publicity of information that can be done on an aggregate basis that will aid in terms of just generally assess assessing what, to what extent uh, transactions occurring with uh, offshore parties. But also at a detailed level, there is an ability for information to be transferred at a personal level, which will aid in tracking people who may want, not want to um, meet their obligations for tax purposes. And I think that's a very good thing, and I believe the opposition are very keen to see that take place as well. The third reason is it is a pragmatic piece of legislation. What we've done is we've excluded ordinary New Zealanders from supplying their information to the Land Information Office unless they've sold their uh, uh, house uh, more than three times in the course of two years. Now, this is where we seem to have a point of departure, particularly from the Labour Party, who want to make sure that every transaction, every New Zealander is captured by this information. And the excuse is it shouldn't take that much more work. Well, the reality is it will take a lot more work, and we don't want to burden New ordinary New Zealanders who want to go about buying and selling their houses without all the encumbrance of all the uh, issues that we want to impose on people who are non-New Zealanders. And I think that is a fair and appropriate exclusion because at the end of the day, many New Zealanders only buy a house very few times in their lifespan and we don't need to be watching and monitoring them like a big brother. The fourth thing about this is the select committee has considered carefully the uh, implementation issues. The information is uh, collected at the time of the conveyancing by the person responsible for managing that uh, conveyancing. And we've had a number of submissions during this, on this issue during our select committee hearings. And uh, generally, the conveyancing industry is happy with that obligation. We've been careful to be uh, about the liability, so we've made sure that uh, the person doing the collection at the point of conveyancing uh, is not encumbered with uh, undue liabilities, uh, so that what happens is we've got a professional, independent party collecting the information, which is then supplied to the Land Information Office. 
And finally, the fifth reason why it's a good piece of legislation is that it meets our international obligations, principally relating to money, money laundering. And I believe, for all those reasons, this is a bill that we should be supporting and that is a good piece of legislation. And no doubt when we uh, talk about the next piece of legislation to be introduced in the House regarding bright line tests, this is going to be a composite uh, package to deal with this issue. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I call Eugenie